Hello everyone, this is Lucas Caceres with the Level Up Financial Planning and today I'm going to be talking to you about the basics of restricted stock units, also known as RSUs. And RSUs are pretty big in the tech industry. I uh, worked with a lot of clients at my previous firm when, uh, when they're primarily in their 50s and 60s that would be receiving stock options or restricted stock units and not really understand how they worked. So I wanted to take the time today to just kind of give you a basic overview as well as I will also record some videos about some of the different strategies and ways that you may want to think about the RSUs moving forward. Uh, but today we'll cover just the basics. Uh, the grant date is going to be the date that you're actually awarded the RSUs. Uh, some companies prefer to wait until you're about a year into working for the employer and they'll start awarding some of these restricted stock units to you. Um, some companies may have it restricted based on kind of level of uh, employment. So if you're, uh, as you're moving up through the ranks, uh, you may go from not receiving restricted stock units to being in that classification where you then start receiving those as a form of compensation. It's a pretty lucrative way of uh, having additional income that's not directly cash to your paycheck each month. Um, the next major thing to be on the lookout for once you receive the restricted stock units is going to be the vesting schedule. So there's a couple of different uh, ways that I've seen companies do this. Typically, it's over like three to four years is the most common of what I've seen. And basically what happens is once those vests, uh, you're going to be taxed at ordinary income rates. So uh, whatever your normal salary bonus, uh, whatever that looks like, you kind of stack what the value is of the stock options that you become owner of. Uh, at the time that they vest, and that becomes just additional income and tax at the same rate as your ordinary income tax would be. After vesting, however, uh, so you may continue to hold on to the stocks uh, for as long as you feel comfortable doing so, and the longer you hold them, uh, once you pass a year, uh, they actually become long-term capital gains, which is preferable uh, tax treatment for sure. Um, if you hold it less than a year, then basically any gains or losses are going to be treated uh, as short-term uh, gains or losses, which uh, basically reduces or increases that ordinary income tax rates. So if you're planning on keeping them for a substantial period of time, definitely you want to keep them over at least a year so that at least when you sell them in the future, they'll uh, be treated at capital gains rates, which is usually going to be 15%, 20% at most if you're in the highest uh, tax brackets. Another huge thing that a lot of people don't realize is once you terminate, you actually lose the RSUs that uh, even though you've been granted them probably a couple years prior, any unvested RSUs actually just disappear and they lose value completely. Uh, that may not always be the case. There are sometimes certain packages where uh, the company tries to give you uh, either like a parachute to kind of um, have different resources and assets as they force you to leave the company. And so sometimes they'll accelerate uh, those restricted stock units so that you can use that value to help kind of fund uh, your expenses between jobs during that time period. So that's kind of the reason why they do that. But in most cases, if you decide to leave on your own, uh, those are going to definitely disappear. So uh, you can't count them as actually being true value until you actually receive them and are able to utilize uh, those assets.